Before I leave the topic of the House, can you just explain to me what came out of that committee? There, there was, of course, that resolution from uh, Congresswoman Miggs. Yes, they, uh, the resolution is based on three grounds. Okay. First, based, they said that SMNI practice uh, intentional for giving false information, meaning okay. fake news. Okay. Second, uh, we give some of our shares of stocks of SMNI Corporation, the Suarezu Corporation, to another person without giving consent to Congress, and that is in violation of the franchise. And third, we fail to give public offering up to 30% to our shares to the public. So I, I have to answer that one by one. Okay. Second, second, with respect to the giving false information, okay, that is absolutely wrong. Okay. We are here to give to share what is what is true, what okay. is uh, what is the reality. We give. We are not. We are not giving any fake news here. But actually, we give what is what is the truthfulness of any news. Now, but granting yeah. claim that that is there is certain uh, irregularity or there's there's certain. Uh, errors in our news, granting mm, yeah. is still that is covered by the freedom of press and freedom of expression guaranteed by the Philippine Constitution. Before we leave that first ground, um, I think the criticism of people against SMNI, I, particularly that, that show of Kai Eric, yeah. uh, is that um, it's about red tagging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, do, do you think there's some legitimacy, legitimacy there, or is it? Um, the right of the host to express opinion. Well, what do you think? There is no legal principle about red tagging under Philippine law. Okay. So there is that, that red tagging principle. Well, what, about, what about defamation? I mean, is there's there... a defamation, of course, freedom of press and freedom of expression is not absolute. Okay. There are certain limitations. But if you talk about topics that involve public interest, okay. if, the, if you want to criticize a public officials, that is part of the freedom of press, freedom of expression, in the exercise of their function as a public official. That's why there is a jurisprudence in the Philippine, Kong, in the Philippine Supreme Court that says that public officials should not be on your skin. Okay. They should be subject, they expect to be subject to public criticism and public ridicule. Well, yeah, they're, they're not supposed to be onion skin, but that's precisely what we're seeing now. Or maybe you, you can say that it's not being onion skin, but maybe one viewpoint could be that there is a political agenda in motion Right against S, you know that that, yeah, that yes, uh, yes. unfortunately uh, has has drawn in SMNI. Yeah, but yeah. can you go to the second point, the, the second ground? By the, the second ground, they said they said that we we transfer shares of stocks okay. of Sorasu Media Corporation of SMNI to another person. Okay. That is not correct. Okay. Because certain shares of Sorasu Media Corporation is under the Kingdom of Jesus Christ. Okay. The religious organization the religious of Pastor organization. Uh, Paul Kibuloy. Headed by, used, uh, used to be headed by Pastor Apollo C. Okay. Kiboloy. Because that kingdom of Jesus Christ is a corporation soul. Okay. That is not a regular corporation. Okay. When you say corporation soul, it is a corporation, one person corporation. Like okay. a one person corporation headed by one person. Okay. It's like a, the Archbishop of Manila, Archbishop of Iloilo, the kingdom of Jesus Christ. That organization is a corporation soul. So, in, they, they show us a, a certain document that the, the Kingdom of Jesus Christ leadership is, was transferred from Pastor Apollo Sikiboloy to Brother Marlon Okobo. So, according to the congressman, that there is transfer of shares because there is transfer of leadership from Pastor Apollo Sikiboloy to Brother Jacobo. That is absolutely wrong. There is no transfer. There was no transfer of shares. There was only change of leadership. Change of leadership is different. Change of leadership is different from from transfer of ownership. Yeah. There was no transfer of ownership because Kingdom of Jesus Christ, headed by Pastor Apollo C. Kiboloy before, is the same Kingdom of Jesus Christ headed by Brother Marlon Jacobo. Okay, I, I've heard you make this argument on other networks before. Yes, because well, let me, uh, let me, the, the leader, the leader thing, the leader is like a trustee. Yes, he is not the owner yes. of Kingdom of Jesus Christ or the properties of Kingdom of Jesus Christ. They are trustee, meaning sure. in Tagalog, pinagkatiwala lang sure. ni Pastor Kibuloy or ni or ni Brother Jacobo yung properties of Kingdom of Jesus Christ. But, but for those who don't know, can, can explain to us the, the structure because I'm not, you know for those again yeah, yeah, yeah. who are not familiar with the law. 
uh, the, does the kingdom of Jesus Christ exist as a separate corporate entity or is it a corporation soul? Or? It's a corporation soul. Okay, and then uh, Swadasug, which owns SMNI, is a for-profit entity? No, or? no, no. Uh, or is it one one entity? Suarasug Media Corporation. They said Suarasug, we're operating Suarasug, but our our corporation is SMNI. They said that we we list we borrowed the franchise of Suarasug. That is not correct. Okay. SMNI, for, for us, SMNI yeah. is a what they call trademark, trade okay. name of okay. Suarasug. So what is the corporation? Suarasug Media Corporation. Okay. But we are do, we are doing business under. SMNI. I see. SMNI is a trade name of Suarasug Media Corporation. And what is Suarasug's Media Corp's relationship with the Kingdom of Jesus Christ? Which is, uh, how is it organized? Is it uh, uh, the, the Kingdom of the Suarasug Media Corporation? There are certain share owned by the Kingdom of Jesus Christ. Okay. The executive pastor of Co the Kingdom. Controlling of Jesus share, uh, super majority. Not super majority. I think, okay. uh, forty percent, forty percent shares. Okay. So. So that is uh, the the head before was Pastor Apollo Sikiboloy. Okay. But now the head of Kingdom of Jesus Christ, meaning the the, the leader church, now. Yeah. Of course, the founder is Pastor Apollo Sikiboloy. Of course, yeah. But the the leader now is Brother Marlon Hakobo. Right. So they said that there was change of ownership from Pastor Apollo Sikiboloy to Brother Marlon Hakobo. That is not correct okay. because they are just the trustee of Kingdom of Jesus Christ. They okay. are not the owner of the properties of kingdom of Jesus Christ. And so that is different. What, what was transferred, allegedly transferred? Shares of stocks. As, they said shares of stocks. Of, from what company to, to or from no, what no, entity to what entity? Kingdom of Jesus Christ. Okay. Transferred the shares of Pastor Apollo Kibolo. Transferred uh, to, to the, Marlon Jacobo. That is not correct. Okay. Because Marlon Jacobo, Brother Marlon Jacobo and Pastor Apollo Sikiboloy, they are the trustee of yeah. the properties of kingdom yeah. of Jesus Christ. So you're saying that 40% or so is owned by the kingdom of Jesus Christ, and what only changed is the, I suppose, the leader of that of that church, right? Yes, yes, yes. Right. Yes. So the, the owner is still the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Yes, the, the kingdom I of Jesus Christ. Christ. Oh. So who are, <coughs> who are the other owners? Who are the owners of the 60%? I forgot. There are many persons involved there. Okay. So there, there's also what uh, cooperatives. Okay. So there are also individuals. I suppose all associated or somehow linked yes, to, uh, yes, yes. to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. But <clears throat> what of their allegation now that um, that you know the shares of Swatersug should be publicly floated or publicly traded? Now? We are in the process of doing it. <clears throat> so. In fact, the the law requires under the the franchise of SMNI, 30% shares should be given to public offering. Mm -hmm. We are on the process of doing it. In fact, 1% plus was already owned by a cooperative okay. of the workers of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Okay. That's another cooperative. Okay. So the law, if you read the franchise law, it never mentioned that it should be given within one year or within two years yeah, or yeah, within I, five years. I was going to ask that. Is there a, a timetable that there was the, no time is stated in law? There was no timetable, <coughs> but we are on the process of complying with that requirement of the 30%. Okay. Okay. So, so, in fact, there is a presumption of good faith on the part of SMNI. Okay. So, so they said that we are in bad faith, we, we violate the law. If they, if that is their allegation, prove it in a proper forum because well, we they, believe they, that SMNI is in good faith. We yeah. complied it. We are on the process of complying, complying the public offering requirement of SMNI. But uh, if Congress throws it back at you and says, "Okay, uh, why don't you prove that there was, you know, uh, this process?" Is what what I can, can prove it? What what can what 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 can be uh, shared with Congress first to back up that statement that you were in the process of uh, first the one percent <coughs> plus was yeah. already given to the cooperative okay. to the cooperative. Then after that, uh, we are on the process of completing the thirty percent. Okay. But now, out of the thirty percent, one percent one percent plus was already transferred to the workers cooperative. Okay, but well, I think just to clarify for people who are not familiar here. Are you saying that you were in the process of making Swatersook a public corporation or a publicly traded corporation? Because there are, two oh. there are two different things, yes. right? So you could be you could be public but not traded. Yeah, yes. Right? But you could be public but traded, right? Uh, according to the franchise law, 
it requires only the 30% public offering, meaning given it should be given to the public the 30%, offered to the public the 30%. Ah, uh, so it doesn't it doesn't say listing. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. So, so that is the 30% requirement, and we are on the process of complying that 30%. But is, are, are there uh, notes of meetings that we can show to we <coughs> can present Congress that, okay, this was our discussion we already and informed the original timetable? We already informed Congress to a letter that certain percentage was already given to a, to a cooperative, and we are in, in compliance with that requirement. Okay. Now, okay, the third ground. So that is the third ground. So first ground is the... They said intentional fake news. Okay. Second ground is transfer of share okay. without the consent of Congress. And okay. third ground is the violation of the requirement of public offering. And you, you mentioned that there was a bill filed. There was now, a uh, bill filed. So yeah. you're expecting more hearings in the House. Yes, yes, yes. Have you had a chance to review it? What is the grounds for the seeking... Same ground. a... The same ground. <laughs> about about violation, alleged violation of the, of the franchise. So they want to amend the law. Uh, if they can do that, they need a confirmation from the House of Senate because uh, the House of, of uh, the Congress of the Philippine Constitution is not only about House of Representative but also includes the House of Senate. From, from this, from the upper chamber. So, <clears throat> uh, what would be the procedure there? Because obviously, it will have to go through committee and several readings. Several readings. And finally, the plenary. Right? Yes. Yes. After that. Uh, submit that to the, the Senate. I, I suppose there will be public hearings as well. Yes, 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 like that. So it will take time. So, but we are the legal team of SMNI. We are ready and prepared to defend SMNI because the, our fight is not only about SMNI. The our advocacy is not only to protect SMNI, but to protect the freedom of press and freedom of expression guaranteed under the Philippine Constitution. Because if you read link the jurisprudence of the Philippine Supreme Court. The freedom of press and freedom of expression is one of the highly protected, uh, highest constitutional right. In fact, if there is a law or there is a resolution or order of any government agency that affects freedom of press and freedom of expression, they are presumed unconstitutional. <coughs> so therefore, government agencies should present evidence that that is constitutional. If they cannot present evidence, the Presumption will prevail. And the presumption is that the order of NTC is unconstitutional. The order of MTRCB is also unconstitutional. Now, I asked Attorney Roque this when we had him over for uh, for the show last week. <clears throat> and I was suggesting that this is not really about SMNI. Yes, yes. That, you know, that this may be really about politics and that SMNI is merely collateral damage. What's yes. your view on that, Daniel? We are talking here, this is partly politics. So I'm not, I'm not talking... This partly not, or largely politics? Partly politics because our fight is not only partly politics, partly legal. But if you, in reality, if you ask the Filipino people, this is largely politics. Okay. So largely politics, and it all starts when Carl Eric questioned the 1.8 billion uh, peso travel fund of the office of the speaker. That all, that is the history, that is the start of the fight of SMNI. Do you think that was a start or that was merely just the the, the reason for looking but, into it? But behind that is politics. <laughs> behind that is politics, maybe the issue of for the 2028 presidential election. So it's too early to to preempt, but based on my personal opinion, this is this this fight of SMNI is about the 2028 presidential election.